Hello everyone, this is Dean, and today we're going to talk a little bit about cutting the cord. About two years ago, I decided that I had had enough with my local cable company and their ever-increasing fees, and I uh, found myself spending most of the time that I watched TV, which is not that often to begin with, but uh, most of the time I was watching uh, one of the, the primary channels like Fox or ABC or CBS, NBC, one of those that the local stations carry. Uh, and then I had Netflix. And so I was spending the, the remaining time, if I was going to watch a show, most of the time it was on Netflix. So I thought to myself, why am I paying you know, $100 or more a month for cable when I don't even use it? So I decided to cut the cord. And if you're thinking about doing the same thing, I would highly highly recommend it. Again, I did it about two years ago, and I certainly have not looked back uh, and will never uh, be going back to cable unless something very significant changes uh, from the way that those cable companies operate today. Um, for my setup, which again, I would highly recommend, I'm, I'm super happy with it, uh, I chose to go with a TiVo for a DVR, and uh, TiVo has a lot of different models that they offer. Uh, I went with the TiVo over-the-air box for my main box and a TiVo mini for a secondary TV that's in the house. And I really like that setup. It's been working great. The only thing that I would have done differently in that situation is TiVo charges $15 a month uh, to have the channel guide, which, in my opinion, you've got to have because that makes it really easy to set up your your DVR and record the different shows that are that are being broadcasted over the air as well as you know flip through the channels when you are channel surfing and see what's on. Uh, they've got some other models that you can pay a little bit more for and those include the uh, channel guide for life uh, basically in the upfront package and at the time I wasn't 100% confident with my decision in TiVo, so I didn't know how long I would be keeping it, and it made more sense to do the, the monthly subscription. But now two years into it, I could have more than paid for buying that up front, and I don't see myself getting rid of TiVo anytime in the near future. It's fantastic. So anyways, I'm going to spend some time, and I'm going to walk you through how you can set up your house with an HD antenna, and additionally, towards the end of the video, I'll walk you through my setup with the, the TiVo over the air as well as the TiVo Mini uh, in case that's the route you go. Uh, if you choose to go with a different style DVR, then the end setup that I walk you through could be a little bit different depending upon which, uh, which DVR you go with. But um, either way, the wiring and everything um, for the HD antenna and how, how I've got that set up is really applicable to to anybody that's looking to do an HD antenna. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here's the diagram that I drew up, and I'll be the first to admit it probably looks like a kindergartner's drawing, but I'm not an architect. I'm a, a computer software guy, so I spend most of my type, time typing rather than drawing anything out. But this is kind of a high-level overview of my setup in my house, and what I'm going to do throughout the video here is break it down into several different parts where I'm explaining the setup to you, and uh, and I'll walk it through so that you'll be able to wire your house, even though your house is obviously going to have a different layout, but you'll be able to, to wire it using the same concepts here, uh, which is really pretty simple. This was not was not difficult to do at all. A couple of things that I'll point out real quick on the diagram here that I'll be referencing throughout the video. So obviously you've got the whole house here. Um, over here on the left, this says cable box. And then I've just expanded out what's inside that cable box. So you can kind of see uh, what's in there. And then of course you have, this is the house. You've got the basement, which is this whole kind of bottom block right here going underneath the, the house. That, that could also be a crawl space depending upon how your, uh, what kind of house you live in. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, we've got the main level, which is kind of this, this level through here. And there could be any number of rooms, whether it's a kitchen or a 
you know, dining room or hearth room or whatever it might be across the main level. And I just happen to have a family room uh, that is part of the main level. And that's where I've got some action going. So I've, I've set up that family room there. And then this is the upstairs level up here. So I'm in a two-story house. Uh, if you were in a ranch, you would just have these two, the, the main level, and then either a basement or a crawl space. Uh, story and a half or two-story, you're going to have uh, probably all three layers of these to work with here. And so this is my upstairs. I've got a four-bedroom house in the upstairs, master bedrooms where I've got a TV, and then there's just a couple of other bedrooms here uh, that I'll mention in the video. And then finally, we've got the attic up here above the house. And um, uh, one thing I'll point out in the drawing here is these guys here that kind of look like spaceships a little bit. That was just my way of drawing the exhaust pipes for the furnace and the hot water heater because they've got you know rain caps on them. So that's what those were supposed to be. So that's kind of a high level of the diagram. And then at the end of the video, I'll take you into a much more detailed view of this after I've explained how everything's all uh, laid out. So here we are outside, and we're looking at the cable box. Now, odds are you've got one of these somewhere on the side of your house. If you've had, if your house is an older house and you've had multiple people that have lived there before you, then you could even have multiple cable boxes uh, because the cable providers all put their own boxes on the side of your house. My house was built in 1992. Right now it's 2006, so we're 24 years old. And my most recent provider is Time Warner Cable. So we're looking at their box. But if I take a look at some other things on the house, there's a box. Um, I don't even know who that's from, but that is telephone wire. If you'll look and see the wire that's coming out of that, uh, right over here. That is telephone. And in 2016, I don't see any reason to have a home phone anymore, uh, seeing as we do everything on our cell phones. So I don't use that, and I've, I've not used it since I moved into this house. Uh, I've got another box here that's another Time Warner cable box. And uh, to be honest with you, I've got no clue what that does. That runs from the Time Warner box over to this telephone network interface box. And... We don't use either of these, so it's just junk sitting on the side of the house that was put in at some point and not used today. And I got my electric meter there, which of course is, is used. And then the new one is the Google Fiber Box. And this, uh, this has not been hooked into the house yet. You can see I've got a couple of wires coming into the box. One of them appears to be cut. And then this is going to be the fiber optic line that's going into the box. And inside that box there's a big spool of cable. And whenever they come out to actually run the, the fiber into the house, I'm sure I'm going to have a line coming from there right down over here by the existing cable box. Not into the existing cable box because there will be no point of going in there, but probably in through this hole where the existing coax cable goes into the house. So uh, what we're gonna focus on here is this box, because that's the one that's in use right now, and the wires that are inside that box that go into the house. And there's, uh, there's wires that come out of the box this way too. If I zoom in there, you'll see there's an orange one. Um, the only thing I use from Time Warner Cable is the high-speed internet, and so that's what that what that is, and that goes down to the ground, and then it's buried, and it runs all the way up to the front by the by the box by the street. So let's take a look in here. Um, you'll have these boxes on the side of the house. <clears throat> in some cases, they'll have locks on them. Uh, you'll notice the uh, the brand new Google Fiber one. It's got just a, a bolt that's holding that in, so I could unscrew that bolt and gain access to that. Um, the the Time Warner cable one just has a zip tie that they stuck in there just to hold it closed. Uh, but in other cases, like this telephone one, you know, it could have a lock on there. My opinion is this is my house, and uh, so this box belongs to me. Even though it says Time Warner, Time Warner cable, it's on my property and it's my house. So if they put a lock on there, I'd cut that lock off. And I'd replace it with 
my own lock or, or something like a zip tie that would do the same job as a lock but allow me to access it. So in my opinion, don't be afraid to cut a lock off there if there's one on there. Especially if you're cutting the cord and you're not even going to use time warner cable anymore, which is where I am. You know, I cut the cord as far as uh, TV goes and I don't even use their TV service. I still use their high-speed internet uh, until Google Fiber's here and then at that point I'll cancel that internet and uh, I won't even use Time Warner Cable. So as far as I'm concerned, what's inside this box is my business and I, I can get into it whenever I please. Alright, so if your house is like mine and you've, uh, and you've had a lot of different TVs and a lot of different rooms over the years since it was built, you're going to have a mess inside this box that looks probably something like this. And the challenge is figuring out which wire goes to which part of the house. So remember, I've got these cables that go into the house. And in, uh, in a little bit, I'll show you the, the other side of this, of where they are in the house. Uh, kind of where they go once they're in the house. But the, uh, the objective of this is figuring out which cable goes to which area of the house. So let's go take a look inside the house and we'll kind of explain how it's all wired in the house and then we'll come back out here and take a look at this. So here's what the coax cable looks like coming inside the house. So directly on the other side of that hole is, uh, is the cables going outside the house to the cable box that we showed you in the previous video. So once the cables come inside the house, of course they can be scattered kind of everywhere. Uh, as far as where they go. So if I look at the ones coming out on this side, you'll see there's both a kind of an orange colored one and a black colored one. And as I follow them around, uh, they simply go, in this case, underneath the, the floor joists. And the orange one uh, is going down the wall to uh, behind this table. What was previously used as, I believe, a cable booster. I'm not using it. It's not... It's not plugged in, uh, but that was plugged into the outlet here and most likely used as a, as a booster just to give the cable more power as you might have you know, five, or, five or even more TVs running off of a, of a single cable inlet. It needs more power. And then you'll see the second black one there is going up through the floor and right above us, I'm in the basement right now, right above us is the kitchen and there's a uh, cable jack in the kitchen. Uh, at some point, prob somebody probably had a, a TV on the kitchen counter or something like that, and uh, that's where that cable is going to. So back over here to the bundle, and a few things I'll, I'll note while we're walking around here. My house happens to be a two-story house uh, with a basement. Uh, if your house is a ranch uh, with a basement, uh, things are going to be just a little bit different. Uh, or if your house is a ranch or a two-story sitting on a crawl space, um, they'll basically be the same scenario as a crawl space as, as this basement would be. Um, I guess if it's sitting on a slab, that would be quite different because you wouldn't have the ability to go underneath the, the floor and, and do all of this stuff. Um, so I'll try and point out some of those things. Uh, kind of how these first two uh, cables are run, like I showed here. Uh, that's how a uh, ranch would be done because you can just go right underneath the only floor or the only level of floor and run your cables right up through the floor. Since mine's a two-story, uh, the areas uh, where the cable is going to be run up to the second story, that gets a little tricky and it's a little different, so I'll, I'll point those out. So now we've got a bundle of cables. It looks like there's about five or six of them that are coming out and coming this way. And then they go into a mess. I've got my circuit breaker here, uh, which certainly has its own mess that I eventually need to clean up. And then I've got a mess of the coax cable where they've been uh, connected and disconnected and rewired right here. And of course, my house was built in 1992. It is now 2006, so we've got 24 years worth of uh, several different homeowners and several different probably cable services and cable installers that have come out and just done who knows what here to 
mix and match all those cables with where they go. But in my case, um, my those cables are then run kind of right along these these power cables and right alongside the air duct lines across here. So we can kind of just walk across and follow them. I'll try to peek up there again. Here you can see there's uh, looks like four four coax cables right here uh, that are still going. The other one or two probably went up the wall somewhere over there on that side again for another TV that might have been in the kitchen or in the hearth room. So these cables kind of run through here and in my case I have a two-story house and right over here is my furnace and whether your house has a finished basement or an unfinished basement, you're still going to have an area of where the furnace uh, and most likely hot water heater are as well, uh, where the exhaust pipes for those, this is the exhaust pipe for the hot water heater, and that is the exhaust pipe for the furnace. They will run up and go all the way up to the attic and eventually uh, out the top of the roof. And houses, in some cases, have this done in, you know, right in the middle of the house. And in that case, you know, going all the way up through the house, there's going to be a, maybe a three foot wide by 16 inch or foot and a half wide uh, area that's, you know, all sheetrocked in. You would never really know where it was just by walking around the house. Uh, but there's going to be a space where those run all the way up. In other cases, uh, this might be done on in the corner or the side of the basement. Uh, but the same thing is true where you're going to have a little, we'll call it a shaft that goes up all the way up into the attic. Uh, and then from the attic, these pipes go up and, and vent out of the ceiling. And this is probably the easiest way to get coax cable or any other kind of cable run from the basement up to those rooms that are going to be in the second story. And you're doing that by running them in that same shaft all the way up into the attic. And then from the attic, you're dropping those cables down into uh, whichever rooms that you want them to be in. And I'll show that a little bit later. And so if we look at all the cables that I've got coming out uh, of here, what you're gonna notice is I have two coax cables. So there's the two. And remember we had four coming earlier. So there's two more try to point them out there two more of that four bundle that are running somewhere else which means they're either going on the main level or they could be going here in the basement and in my case I've got one of them uh, that's remaining in the basement and if I follow these over here you'll see one of them goes uh, I've got a separate part of my basement here that's a, a finished area and that actually goes up to the family room TV and then I've got, if I back up here, another one right here that runs along the, the rafters that go to an office area that I've got framed in uh, over there in my basement. That's kind of a little office area that's finished off. Okay, and if I actually was to go into the office, um, I could show you. It runs down through the wall and it comes out right there. So there's the cable coming out of the wall, and simply what I did is I ran that uh, through the ceiling before this was finished off, and it goes just right up, right up over there. I'll come back over here, and uh, there it is coming out the other side, right there. I also ran a Cat5 for internet, and it comes out right there. So anyways, back over here. So in my shaft running up through the entire portion of the house and into the attic, I have my two coax cables. Uh, this wire here is for the thermostat that connects to the furnace down here. It goes right down here and, and connects to the furnace. And that runs up through that shaft and into a thermostat that I've got. Uh, and then I've also got, it's gonna be hard to see with the lighting here. You should see a blue wire. It's this, it's this blue wire right here. That's another coax cable that I'm running through that shaft all the way up into the attic and then dropping it down into uh, one of the rooms up there where I wanted to wire in 
internet to have some some extra speed so when you're uh, gonna look to run an antenna from your attic and then hook it up into the rest of the system what you first need to do is come down to either your basement or if you have a crawl space and you need to look to see where the wires are coming from once they come outside which I've shown in the previous video kind of see where they're going into the house and if you're like most other second third fourth fifth homeowners of the same house uh, you're gonna find a mess and in a lot of cases you'll have a lot of wires that are unused where someone 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago had a had a TV set up in a room that you're not using a TV uh, for that room so while the wire is run certainly may not be in use in my case in my house I only have two TVs I have one in the family room and one in the master bedroom and uh, the only other thing that I use coax for is my high-speed internet which today is through Time Warner cable so it uses coax but soon that's going to be replaced with Google Fiber and so I'll have a fiber optic line running probably through that same hole and when that happens you know you can see here I've got one two three four five six seven different coax cables coming through that hole and I'll only be using three of them two for the TV and one for the antenna which I'll explain how the antenna works uh, in just a little bit so that's the the basement now let's move on to the next step okay so now we're upstairs and we are in the master bedroom where we have a TV and we have an outlet very common I'm sure most of your homes uh, will have an outlet just like that in your master bedroom and possibly even in uh, more bedrooms that are upstairs uh, in my case we've got them in every bedroom that's upstairs uh, because at one point people had TVs in in each bedroom that was upstairs in the house and I've got four bedrooms in a in a two-story house upstairs here so when you're looking at an outlet in an upstairs bedroom let me try to hold this right behind that outlet is going to be coax cable and in almost all cases it runs up the wall and into the attic so right ab I'm in the I'm in the top floor of the house and right above that ceiling is the attic and so that cable on the other side of this outlet runs up the wall and into the attic and in my case it goes up into the attic and then that uh, that little chute that I was talking about that the uh, hot water heater and furnace exhaust goes through that cable goes over and right about here right about this corner here is where that chute runs in my house and it runs down that chute and it runs down through the main level floor and all the way down into the basement and so this coax cable that's on the other side of this outlet is one of those two cables that ran up that chute and so it's simply going up through the attic across some of the rafters in the attic and then down that chute and then once it goes down that chute if you remember it would have been facing this way it runs across the rafters in the basement and out that little hole that uh, that you saw earlier to the cable box outside so now walking into my daughter's room uh, she also has an outlet in her room now we determined that we're not going to have a TV in my daughter's room, at least no time soon. She's only four years old, so she certainly doesn't need her own TV in her room. So when we first moved in, this had a cable running all the way up the wall, just like in the master bedroom, and into the attic. And from there it ran across and then down that same chute that the master bedroom bedroom ran and all the way down into the the basement and then from there all the way over to the uh, the hole that goes to the main cable box outside so that's pretty much going to be the theme uh, for each 
outlet that you have in each bedroom in the top level of the house. And again, this only applies if you have a two-story house. If you've got, a, or I should say a two-story or a, a one-and-a-half story. If you have a ranch, then they're not going to run through the attic because in a ranch, you can just run them straight down into the basement or the crawl space, and then from there they go out. So they only have to go in the attic if you have a two-story or a story-and-a-half. A ranch, they don't need to do that. So in my case, I had, uh, in this case, I had two cables that were running from each of these rooms in the upstairs up to the attic, down through that chute, and back into the basement. Now, what I did, since we weren't going to be using this outlet for a TV in this bedroom, is I unscrewed this, and these are just two screws just to take this off, and then this just has screws on each side, so I just unscrewed the cable, and it's just regular coax cable, that was connected to this from the inside, so I unscrewed it from there, and then I went up to the attic, and I found that cable running through the attic, which is easy to do, you just you know, look straight up here, climb in the attic around that sp same spot, and then kind of feel around. Norm normally it'll be buried in some insulation, but you just kind of feel around and you'll find it. And then I pulled it up, and it comes right up. Once it's unscrewed from this, it just comes right up because there's just a little hole drilled in the header uh, up there in the attic, and it'll come right out. And so what I did is I hooked my HD antenna up to this line that was up in the attic. And so basically I just reused this instead of having to run a new cable up through the attic or up through that, uh, that shaft that goes up through the, the whole house and into the attic. I just used this one because it was already ran up there. And so that's where I hooked my HD antenna up is to, to this cable, but it was up in the attic and I hung it on one of the rafters up high in the attic uh, so it would get the best signal possible. So now what I've got... <clears throat> is I've got two cables that are running through that shaft, as you saw earlier on in the video. One of those cables goes to the master bath master bedroom, which is this one right here. And the other cable used to go to that outlet in my daughter's room, but now it goes to the HD antenna that's hooked up to it up there in the attic. So now the next thing that you need to do is go out to your cable box and you need to figure out which coax cable in your cable box corresponds to which let's call it outlet in the house and in my case I have four actually I have one of them for my high-speed internet I have one of them for my master bath, master bedroom, which would be this one right here. I have one of them for the HD antenna that's in the attic, which used to be in that bedroom right over there we just came out of. And then the fourth one uh, goes to the TV that's in the family room. So those are the four that are active inside of my cable box outside. Now there's many more in that cable box. I think there's like seven or eight. But again, I'm only using four. Those extra three are just for other areas of the house that used to have cable uh, that I'm not using anymore. One of them's in the kitchen. One of them I showed you downstairs was that, uh, that power booster. And I had just haven't taken the time to figure out where the other one goes because I just never used it. So anyways, um, let's go out to the cable box again. And let's take a, a deeper look at those and kind of show you how to wire this thing up. All right, so we've just talked about where these cables go in the house and kind of how they're wired between the, the rooms that might be in the basement versus the rooms that might be on the main level, if you've got a ranch, uh, and the ones that go to the upstairs level if you happen to have a one-story, a two-story home. So the challenge here uh, is figuring out which cable goes where inside the house. And you'll notice I've already done the, the hard work here, is I've labeled all of mine. So this cable goes to the kitchen. This cable goes to the master bedroom outside wall. 
Looks like uh, this cable goes to the family room. This one goes to the master bedroom inside wall. And this one goes into the basement. And uh, in my case, I've, I've got that run into the, uh, the office that I showed you down there. So, how, do I, how did I do this? Well, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, if you want to spend just a little bit of money, it's not that expensive, you can go to your local Lowe's, Home Depot, hardware store, and you can buy a little uh, tester where you plug it in, one end of it would go into the room in the outlet in the wall, and then the other, uh, the other end would come out here into the end of the cable, and it'll beep to tell you when you've got the right cable. That's the, the easiest way to do it. Um, and that's probably the way that I would recommend spend 15 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is for that little tester and save yourself a big headache or what you could do since this video is all about cutting the cord and switching to an HD antenna is you could come outside and hook your HD antenna up to one of these cables and then uh, go inside and turn on your TV that's hooked to whichever outlet and see if you've got channels and if you've got no channels at all, then that means uh, this, this cable does not go to that room. So then go to the next room and hook up a TV and turn it on and see if you've got channels. And if you do, then you know, okay, uh, for instance, this one's labeled master bedroom outside wall. So if I unhooked this and I hooked my HD antenna to this cable and I put a TV in the master bedroom outside wall and it had uh, some channels that I would know, okay, this is the master bedroom outside wall. So I would label it and then I would probably take this one and hook it to the HD antenna and then go and find, uh, go, you know, find which TV in the house has channels. And you're probably gonna have some outlets that don't have any channels at all. Or I'm sorry, you're probably gonna have some outlets that don't have a TV. That's where it gets really difficult. You might have to tote a TV around and move it into that room and hook it up just for a minute to see if it has channels. And eventually, you know, if you take a TV to every single room in the house, you're going to find uh, which one has channels based on your HD antenna being hooked up to it, and then you can label that. So this one's the family room. So, for example, if I hooked my HD antenna up to this cable right here, and then I turn the TV on in the family room and it had channels, I would know I have the family room and I would label it. So if you're planning on staying in your house for any number of, of years, I would highly, highly recommend doing this. It's a, it's a bit of a painful process, probably take you about an hour to do. If you go and spend the 15 bucks and get that tool, then it'll probably take you about 20 minutes to do. And labeling these will be well worth it uh, as you look to expand and change around your layout of what, where your TVs are in your house and what services you're using, whether it's uh, an HD antenna or a DVR or whatever it might be. So I would highly, highly recommend doing that. So let's talk about my setup and what I've done and how it works, okay? So first of all, let's start out by looking at the setup that I have and then we'll talk about alternative setups that you could also do. So the setup that I have is I have high-speed internet through Time Warner Cable, soon to be Google Fiber, and I have a TiVo DVR, and that TiVo DVR is set up in my family room TV, and then I also have a TiVo mini box, which is kind of like a slave DVR box that lets you watch all the, the shows that you've recorded on the DVR, as well as the user channel guide and all that. I've got that set up in the uh, master bedroom inside wall. Okay, so that's my setup. Now, your setup might be that you're not going to do a DVR at all, and you're just going to do an HD antenna, and you want to use that HD antenna across multiple TVs within the house. And that's actually easier to set up than this, uh, and I'll explain that to you here in just a little bit. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, Time Warner cable, which happens to be high-speed internet, and that just loops kind of around here, and I've hooked it into a splitter. And then from that splitter, I have two lines that are coming out of it, okay? One line goes to the basement, you'll see here, and one line goes to, that's upside down, I know, but that says master bedroom inside wall. 
Okay, so those are the two lines that I have the internet hooked into. And the reason for that, I'll explain when I go show you my, my current wireless router and my TiVo box to see how that's wired kind of downstream. So those are the two things that I've got wired from the internet itself. Now, I have a couple other things wired together here. Uh, here's one that there's nothing to. So this is a wire, and this is probably my kitchen. Yeah. So that's the kitchen wire that I showed from earlier from uh, downstairs that just ran up to the kitchen. Someone probably had a TV in the kitchen at some point. We don't have a TV in our kitchen, so this is just unused. So it's a wire that's unused. I could clip it off, but... Um, you never know what the future holds. Maybe at some point I'll want to put a TV in the kitchen. So I'm going to leave it in here, and I've left it in here since I've moved into the house, and it doesn't hurt anything to stay in there. So it doesn't hurt anything to have uh, dormant or inactive cables that are running through there. Here's the same thing. Uh, here's another one uh, that's, that's dormant and inactive. And you'll notice this one here I don't even have labeled. So... To be honest with you, I don't know where this goes in the house. It's in the bundle that goes somewhere in there, but I'm not using it for anything. So it's going somewhere, but I don't know where. So I'm just leaving it there because maybe sometime in the future I'll find where it goes and I'll want to use it. So again, there's no harm in leaving that stuff in there. Okay, so uh, there's two more cables that are in the house uh, that I've got wired together, and I'll show you. I've got one that says master bedroom outside wall and I've wired that into the one that says family room. Okay, now there's a reason I did this. Um, I actually labeled this incorrectly when I was first setting this up. If you remember from the previous video, I had... Uh, a line or an outlet in my daughter's bedroom and that's what this one is so I should have labeled this uh, daughter's bedroom or I uh, better use south directional in case somebody else buys the house in the future so that you know, they know what that means so I, I could have said it's it's like the I don't know north east or whatever uh, bedroom in the house and that's what this would have been labeled as this is the one that I removed from that bedroom and put into the attic, okay? So since this one's in the attic, this is the one that I hooked that HD antenna into, okay? So I, maybe I should, at some point I'll come out here and I'll relabel this and I'll put uh, attic HD antenna because that's really what this is labeled for. I, I labeled these years ago before I cut the cord and, and did all that stuff. So this one is the attic HD antenna. And the attic HD antenna is hooked into the cable that goes into the family room. Now, the reason that I did that is I have a TiVo, and the way that a TiVo works is it wants you to hook the antenna, the HD antenna, directly into the TiVo, okay? So that's what this is, this family room this doesn't connect directly to the TV, per se. It, correct, it connects to the TiVo DVR box that's inside of the family room, okay? So, again, I'm just going to review this. I know it's probably boring if, if you've got it by now, but I want to make it clear for everybody else. This one is the attic that has the HD antenna hooked into it. It's the same cable that I removed from my daughter's pink bedroom and pulled up into the attic and hooked the HD antenna into. And I've tied it together, or hooked it together, with the family room, which is where the TiVo DVR is. Now, if I didn't have a DVR, and if I only wanted to use the HD antenna across multiple TVs, and by the way, you don't have to have multiple HD antennas for multiple TVs. One HD antenna can serve any number of TVs. Now, the more TVs that you're using on it at the same time, uh, the weaker the signal is going to get because you're drawing a lot out of that uh, HD antenna. So just be aware of that. But if you've got two or three TVs, I wouldn't hesitate at all to just have one HD antenna and use multiple TVs. And to do that, here's how you would do it. So this is my HD antenna line. 
okay, I would put a splitter right here. And a splitter looks like that. That's a splitter. It's got one in and multiple outs. Most of them have two outs, but I think there are some out there that have any number of four, five, six, seven different outs that could be on them. So you would bring your antenna and you would go to the in. So this would be your HD antenna going to the in. And then your different TVs like family room, master bedroom, bathroom, wherever else you want to have your TVs, they would be going into the splitter there. And that's it. That's all the wiring you have to do if you're just going to run an HD antenna directly to the TVs with no DVR or no uh, type of box like that. If you do have a DVR, then you need to understand how the DVR wants it to be set up and wire it accordingly out here, which in my case, the DVR wanted it to be set up to where we would have the antenna going directly into the TiVo DVR. And then from the TV, TiVo TVR, there are other uh, outputs that come out. And I'll show you those inside here in just a moment. Okay. So that makes it pretty simple. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention is my particular TiVo setup uses a system. It's got two options. One of them is, uh, it, it's called Mocha. And really what it is, is it's taking your existing coax and it's adding data to that coax in addition to the antenna. And you have to have a Mocha adapter for that. And I'll walk you through what that looks like inside for those of you that want a TiVo. I'll, I'll make a kind of a final clip at the end of this where people can turn it off if they don't want a TiVo. And you can, you can continue to watch it if you do have a TiVo and, and see exactly how it's set up. So in that case, uh, the way I had to do it is I had to run one wire to the master bedroom inside wall and one wire from the basement and I had to hook those into the uh, the cable that was coming into the house in addition so I've, so I've got that set up cable I'm sorry cable I should say internet internet coming into the house going to the basement which is where I've got that mocha adapter which I'll show you and then cable going to the call it the slave uh, TV which is the TiVo mini that's in the master bedroom uh, inside wall so internet going to those and then HD antenna going to the TiVo primary box which is in my family room and that's it there's a lot of other stuff that's unused there's an orange cable here that goes down somewhere it looks like it's cut right here so at some point this orange cable probably went into the house I didn't cut that some previous homeowner cut that and that's just sitting in here so I could unscrew this and throw this thing away it doesn't even need to be in there and then I've got a couple of empties uh, this one here is not labeled so I don't even know where that goes and then this one's that kitchen one I don't have a, a TV in the kitchen and that's it so once you really understand what's going on inside this cobweb of a mess once you understand it it's pretty easy and it's always good to draw out a diagram that's what i did when i first set it up is draw out a diagram so i could kind of understand what wires going where and what's connecting where all right so let's go back in the house and uh and we'll take a look at the at the tivo specific stuff for those of you that want to do a tivo okay so this segment of the video is uh focused on how to hook up a tivo system with a mocha adapter and a TiVo mini. So again, in my situation, I've got a, it's called an OTA TiVo, it stands for over the air TiVo. It's primarily optimized for people who are cutting the cord and gonna use an HD antenna, but also still want a DVR, uh, and in some cases a, a channel guide so that you can easily record shows on the main uh, channels that you get over the air. So in the previous sections, we talked about all the different cables that were coming into the house. And one of those was labeled basement. And that's the cable you're seeing right there in the video. And just to kind of remind you from earlier, that basement cable runs right there 
and then it gets mixed in with a bunch of other stuff that goes all the way over there and eventually out side to the box that I showed earlier. Okay, so that's one of these where I just want to run all the way in here. And it comes down here. And in my case, I just dropped it right down here because I've got all this stuff just sitting on the floor. In the future, I'll certainly clean this up and I'll probably build a shelf and get these things mounted on the shelf. But for now, this works fine for me just sitting on the floor right there. So what we've got is the cable that you see right here is the one that was from the outside cable box labeled basement. And what I've got is that's going into the Mocha adapter. And so this is the Mocha adapter. And if you're going with a TiVo, you can get that directly through TiVo. Uh, you need one of these. If you have a over the air TiVo box and a TiVo mini. And the reason you need one is you actually will need one Mocha adapter for each TV that's in your house. I have two TVs in my house but the TiVo Mini comes with a built-in Mocha adapter. So if you're going with a TiVo Mini, you'll just need one, and then the Mini would have the other. So anyways, that's the Mocha adapter, and the purpose of that is to uh, take coax cable and add in data to also flow through that coax cable. So basically it's mixing in the data and uh, the coax to go into coax. All right, so here's how it works. On the, uh, and it'll be hard to see here, on the Mocha adapter, you're gonna have things that are labeled on the back. And one of them is going to be coax in. Another one is gonna be TV slash STB out. You'll have a power, and then you'll have an ethernet, okay? And so here's how you wire this up, and I'll include a diagram of all of us at the end of the video. I'm bringing the one in from the basement. And if you remember from the video, the basement was tied into the internet from Time Warner cable, coax cable, okay? So uh, at some point, if I was gonna switch this out with Google Fiber, I'm gonna need to figure out how to get the Google Fiber line to go in here to the Mocha adapter, which Fiber's not coax, so not sure what I'm gonna do yet there, but we'll figure it out. Um, so we've got the the high-speed internet coming in to the Mocha adapter and then going out we have a coax line that's going from the Mocha adapter I'll follow it all the way around so you can see it I apologize for the mess I know I need to clean all this wiring up but it goes into the back of my wireless router so this is the wireless router that's provided from Time Warner cable okay or whatever your high-speed internet, if you had AT&T AT U-verse or whatever your high-speed internet provider is, they're gonna provide a wireless router with it. And so you're going from the out of the Mocha adapter into the inside, and that's labeled. Well, it's not really even labeled, but that's the only spot on, on the back of your wireless router that a coax cable can go in. Okay. So now you also have to tie the data. So I've got a data cable on my Mocha adapter and that data cable, if I'm following it through here and again, apologize for the mess, where it eventually goes is this yellow one right into any port on the back of your wireless router. Mine has four and I'm using all four of them for various things. But this one, this yellow one, that's the one that's going to the Mocha adapter, okay? So that's kind of the first half of the setup of hooking up your Mocha adapter. Now there's a second part of this, okay? On the back of your TiVo itself, you're going to have two things you need to hook into it. One of them is going to be the antenna, and it'll be labeled on the back of the TiVo box, and it'll say antenna. If you remember from the previous section of the video here, we had our HD antenna, which was labeled as master bedroom outside wall. That's the same cable I, I drug out of my daughter's bedroom and hooked up the HD antenna to. I tied that into 
the coax line that was going to the family room, which is going into the back of the TiVo. I'll show you where that is here. So if I look at all my lines that are going through here, if you recall, I had four of them uh, way back here. So there's four black coax cables here. Two of them turn up into that shaft that I showed earlier. Here's the two to the go of the shaft. One of these is going into the attic to hook to the HD antenna. The other one is going to the master bedroom inside, which is the, uh, the TV that's in our master bedroom. So I've got those two coax cables. Of the four that were running there, the third one is going to the basement, which is the one I just showed that is splitting off right here. Okay, that was the one labeled basement and that simply goes down and hooks up to my mocha adapter which i just showed you and then the final one is the family room one and that was labeled family room and if you remember from out in the box the family room was tied into the hd antenna one and that goes right through here and on the other side of this wall there's a there's a finished room in our in our basement but um, I was able to follow that and see where it goes, and it goes up into the family room, okay? So that's the antenna line. Your antenna line is running straight, or in, in my case, since I'm using a TiVo, the antenna line is running directly into the TiVo box. If I was not using a TiVo, then I would run my antenna line directly to whatever TVs are gonna use it. If it's just one, then you run your antenna straight to the back of the TV. If it's multiple TVs, then you get a splitter and you run it to as many TVs as you want through a splitter. Okay, there's a second line coming out of here. See that, or that gray colored one? That's a Cat5 cable, not the blue one. I'm talking about that gray one that's right alongside the coax. And the gray one goes right over here. And I just kind of have these things, you know, strung, strung down here. And the gray one, right here, go on the other side. <clears throat> Here's my gray one right here. It goes into the wireless router, okay? So the TiVo box itself is connected to the HD antenna and it's connected to my wireless router, okay? So here's where the real magic of this Mocha adapter comes in, okay? The Mocha adapter allows you to run another TV connected through a TiVo Mini to your main DVR. And it makes the coax cable that's going to that Mini TV, it makes it smarter so that it can get data through there, not just antenna through there, okay? So if you didn't have a Mocha adapter, you could still run an antenna to your second TV, third TV, fourth TV, however many you want, and you could still have channels through the antenna. However, you wouldn't be able to do things like go to Netflix and use all the other apps that are through the TiVo that are uh, that need internet connection for, like Amazon Prime, Instant Video, and Netflix, and you know, there's a slew of other apps that can be run on there. And so that's what that does. That takes running this, cab this cable from your wireless router to the TiVo, and then having a second cable come from the router to the Mocha adapter allows for data to run over a coax cable in addition to an antenna. So that's really what, what all the magic's about. Uh, one final tip I'll give you, and again, I'm gonna do a diagram, so you'll see that here in just a moment. Uh, one final tip I'll give you, try and keep your wireless router a few feet away from your Mocha adapter. When I first did this, I had them sitting right on top of each other, and the range of this wireless router went to shit. It, it, I couldn't use it 15 feet across the room, I was getting a very poor signal because for some reason, these interfere with each other. You get them spread apart by a foot or two feet, and that problem goes away and the range is back to, to normal 
on your wireless router. All right, so I'll be back with you in just a moment with the diagram and I'll just kind of walk you through one final time with the diagram, how this, how this stuff works.